I think we're getting used to this location. It's not the easiest one to transport people in. It takes us like probably about 40 minutes to ship mm. in 30 people. And yes, this is a big day. 250, lots of it's with the army. Um, we've got a few independents and they've traveled from all over the place, like Napier and Palmerston North. And we've got a whole heap of Wellington elves who've come up to be elves here again. So we've got a, a good, strong bunch of regulars that keep coming back. It's a good location, it looks like the moon, but there's a lot of, um, you know, ankle twisting and uh, good knee snapping to be done as the, lo the actual set is so small and we're making people run. We've been using the army and we lost five orcs in the first day. Um, basically two to claustrophobia, one to a tw two to twisted ankles and one to a busted knee. knee. yeah. So. And in total it's seven down, I think. Seven down, seven to Rapehu, nil to us. Yep. So. Going through them like flies. And the moss. I don't know if oh, you've the heard moss. about the moss. Doc's probably round, mm. but yes, Shh. we're only allowed to walk on the carpet, and you've probably seen a lot of carpet round. Mm. Oh, God, I'm probably standing on moss. Actually, and ooh. So. It makes things right, a little bit difficult. Sometimes we've seen people going to war and then they're dodging moss instead of thinking about going to war. So <laughs> just try and keep an eye on that. But we're very environmental and everybody's very careful. Mm. Go, Go the dogs. moss. Go the moss. Rocks. <laughs> rocks. Rocks. Yep, no new rocks. <gasps> moss. <gasps> oh, <shit>. Moss. <laughs> Avoiding the moss. Going on to come. Avoiding the moss. Going on to the... <laughs> That's great. Ready, hold! Start One, two! This is the biggest low-budget film being made anywhere in the world at this time. <laughs> <laughs> it's the biggest low-budget film being made in the Wellington, Wellington area. In the Wellington area. It's the biggest low-budget film being made in the history of the planet. I know. I've always been asked, all, all the actors have already said, you know, with a budget like this, I can't believe we're like shooting in tin sheds. Where, where is all the money going? <laughs> you, did you tell them we built these tin sheds? <laughs> We're going to have music of the ring, which is um, a kind of almost beautiful elvish music. Mm. So it has this very sort of lyrical, seductive quality. That's so receiving. But, but black great. speech comes out underneath. underneath. There's this sort of bubbling, yes. insidious, evil, <laughs> whispering stuff, yeah. which gets louder as it becomes more obvious what it is. You know, it's, its true nature becomes more known. Mm. Right, so the, each of the ring rays are going to have a different sword, is that yep. the idea? That's right, this is the... We're trying to attain some sort of mythical reality, I think. And it has to look like it's been lived in and sweated in and broken and repaired. And if it, that feel can come across, then I think something right, will come okay, through. Good. I've had requests again about people um, coming to view things as they happen. For instance, today, the makeup tests. I've had to say no. I'm obviously going to have to do a memo. It's wonderful that everybody's interested, but we can't have people standing around watching actors doing their thing. They may never have seen it before, and it might be highly amusing and very interesting. But I just have to say again, everybody, the answer will always be no. So please don't ring and bother asking anymore, because the answer's going to be no. Just so you know, one debate we're going to have with the Maori tribe there is the depiction of the peak. And I'm sure we're going to want to see it. No. I don't you don't want to see it? Well, should we just kind of, should we just say what we're I think we'd probably win it. we just have to go through the argument, you know. Well, it's, um, it's, inter the it's, it's interesting because I don't think we would see it. Because okay. if we're seeing the peak, we're going to want it to, to put in a, an exploding volcano because yeah. Mount Doom's erupting the whole time. And if, right. we're, if we're putting an exploding volcano in, we're probably going to make a more interesting looking peak. Because right, yeah. the peak doesn't look like shit from, from here. Right. The peak just looks, you can't even see it's a peak. It just kind of just goes Ooh. up to a sort yeah. of a ridge line. And, the mm. and, and, and if you we're going to Mount Doom, we just want a big cone blasting away up there. Thing. So, this is so in, in a funny kind of a way, it's a situation where we'd point our cameras up there, but we might then Probably. might then replace everything up there with a with a miniature and a blast yeah, and yeah, a CG. So, so we can tell I, I, them I th that we would see it. I think in a in a way we could be very honest and accurate to say that the peak will not be appearing yeah, in the film. film. At the moment, uh, we're knee deep in a bit of a numerical challenge we we're talking about it yesterday we feel like we're drowning by numbers in this department uh, it's because the complexity of it that we need because we've got so many shooting units 
and there are so many doubles, both um, scale and big rig double. We had um, 64 Frodo outfits that we would need for the films and 32 Aragorns and we were up to 133 bags, travel bags, for each of the characters. And as a consequence, the girls are feeling ever so slightly disheartened. Um, all of our stuff we're supposed to arrive today, apart from the trunk radios, is either not in country or is in Auckland with customs. So they're scrambling, trying to find replacements. But I'm going to have to work tomorrow to sort of sort it all out so the second unit aren't left too high and dry. But they don't need walkie-talkies next week. Uh, I just want to know what gear we've got and what gear they have just so it doesn't end up that there being anything missing. At, the at the moment, we've got everything. It, it's going to be borderline. I'm waiting on some stuff to come over now, whether we've got enough stuff for Monday. I right, can make so it work, but it's a bit of a shit fight. But, yeah, just letting you know that okay. at the moment... But at the moment, I don't want you to work tomorrow. Um... <laughs> I can't see any other way getting it done. The one thing that we're obviously going to deliver, and it's as obvious we are, just from seeing, is, is we're in a sort of ILM or digital, digital domain level of quality, probably better. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's every expectation that Gollum is going to be better than Jar Jar Binks, just in terms of his realism and his lip sync and, every, and everything else, you know. I mean, you're sort of, we're, we're aiming at that level. We're going to be using the radios that we've got on Monday. Yes. So they're not going to be any other radios to work with. Uh, Capital Communications bringing those 30 in case, the standby. Which, which 30? You said they weren't here. We can do, probably can do every shot that we've got planned for. If we lower our sights to Lost in Space, we'd lose half our guys because they probably wouldn't want to be involved, but then we'd hire cheaper guys in who would just be happy to do it anyway. We'd, have, we'd be down to that quality. They'd get the shots for that sort of money. I mean, you know, there's, there's uh, options like that if they choose. Well, you know... We've had these radios for ages, so I'm not quite sure why we just haven't distributed them already. Uh, because I was waiting for the accessories to arrive and the trunking radios. Right. But, okay. I don't want it to. I don't want this to work tomorrow. Is that meaning? Thank you very much. I'll bring Charlie in and really get into it with him, and I'll just see if there's something I can spot that can get rid of a couple of million at least, just to initially to get a head start on it, and just see what we can do from there. Yeah. Take Jo's salary out of my wage if she can't work tomorrow. She's got to work tomorrow to get everything finished. If you have a problem with that, take it out of my salary. You have my Cara, is... I've got her over there in tears. walkie-talkies. I mean, I can't believe we can't distribute walkie-talkies. She has been working all week trying to sort out the mess of bearing. It's still not ready to be well, done. Be They're still people wanting more. Oh, She's back on the people trying to work out what they want. She cannot finish it by today. She has to work tomorrow. I will okay. pay her. That's it. That's all. It's that easy. I'll do it. Take it out of my yeah, How are you doing? You ready for the first one? What's up? What was that? Normally we've got like a main unit of lighting, which is which is where most of the lighting goes. And then there's a second unit which is not quite as big as the main. Um, not using as many lights perhaps and then there's a miniatures unit again which normally doesn't use as much as much lights but on this job each of those three units are as big as each other basically um, the second unit almost has exactly what the main unit has in terms of lighting packages distribution uh, gripping gear what, if, what have you and the miniature team a lot of dimmers and that kind of control work it's huge on that scale that's why you, that we've got so much gear here laid out ready to be distributed to the different units. So we basically just sit here for most of the day and we talk about old movies, keep our eye out for Rick Porras, the associate producer. Um, somebody just checks the window, sees if he's approaching, and when we see Rick coming, we start doing some story plots. OK, so if you bring this part here, with, the, with, with this one, this is one with a... Yeah, we get two or three done, don't we? And yeah. we talk about old movies again. And yeah. come on. So it's, good, it's a fun day, good day. Last of the summer days before we start the hell of shooting, really. Our storyboards also go into the animatics, and the animatics are like a little movie version of the film that we make in advance of the actual shooting, where we film our storyboards with a video camera, we then cut them together on the Avid. It gives us an opportunity, really, to look at the film ahead of shooting, um, to, it informs us about the script, tells us if you know, bits of the film don't seem to be working, if the pace isn't quite right, if there's boring bits, if the momentum is wonky, um, we have a chance to fix it. 
what the brief for the tree was, that it was a very old, gnarled tree with long limbs that crept right out over Bag End. And uh, it's a, that makes it a nice looking tree, but logistically it makes it very difficult in that it is so unbalanced. All the leaves uh, which would shrivel have been picked off, and these are all artificial oak leaves that are wired on. There's about a quarter of a million artificial leaves. So we had 10 people for oh, just on a week and a half wiring leaves. You've painted a lonely mountain. Echenin, it's from the verb echedo. Plural, not singular. That's right. It's Sindarin, the language of elves. He's first of all standing or sitting on there, and then you're going to climb over the back. You have, to, you have to climb back, and then you can go around. So you, you, that, your arm's dangerous there, that's all right, yeah, OK. OK, Zane here hasn't been out on the big show for a while, and he's ready for the ramp now. <laughs> Come on, Zane. It feels like a million different moving parts. Whoa, hey. <laughs> aren't connected, they're just attached. Nice. There's really nothing you can do to train for it other than get up in them and walk up and down. These hands work at the same scale as the rig, but they also hopefully double to show human contact with the hobbits and helping with the scale. Only a couple of carrots and some cabbages and, and those three bags of potatoes that we left you last week and then the mushrooms the week before. Yes, Pippin. My point is, he's clearly overreacting. Run! Elijah has to fall down onto the ground. It was very with, serious uh, shot. Falling down onto Billy with me by his side near yeah. his anal passage. And as he fell down, he let go a little, <laughs> a little burp. What? That was great. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. That was great, guys. Have you got, have you got one, one more, one more on you? Me and Dom were doing a lot of good acting as well. But yeah, we, I can't we wait can't. to see if it shows up on the sound. And at my eyes, one of the and it was really, really sore. <laughs> And I was almost sick. Yeah. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Even the thought of it now. My, my nose and ears were bleeding. Yeah, they were. Uh, you gotta love your castmates. Is this a statement? Is this a suggestion? Are you a, is this an aspiration? It's aspiration. <laughs> Have you seen Elijah's ears? Okay, well, they're looking good. But it's very important that you get an indiscernible blend down onto that. No! If you don't know what you're doing, you can basically send your knees through your chin. I sell. I'm just going to pop the second unit of this. Go on, Sam. I'll surprise you for a dance. What, me? Just walk up and take her hand. I think I'll just have another egg. So this, uh, this Elijah guy, you know this Elijah Wood guy? Yeah. Have, have you spoken to him? Yeah, a couple of things. I was speaking to him today and he's just been a real hey, idiot. Guys. Hey, guys. Hey. 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 How are you, man? man? How are you? Hey, good, good. It's pretty since cool, isn't it? Elijah Wood. <laughs> hey, I've got a present Down for you. Down by the hand. Huh? A present for you. A present? Yeah. Come on for it. Oh, just for Yeah. Nothing. Yeah? Just something I picked up. Oh, you oh, deserve one, man. Oh, that's cool. You guys are going to go and get it up. All right. Here's a <laughs> Next time, I'm going to punch last him right this. <laughs> <laughs> I already did that to him the other day, man. Oh, yeah. He has. He was, and he was, and he was he cried as well. He was like, hey, mate. Hey. 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 What's going on? Cut an apple. <laughs> hey. Well, Woo! Good, guys.
I've never met friends like you before on a set. Ah, uh, shut up. No, no, honestly, I mean it. Nah, I, I, I would agree with that as well. You know about my uncle? never been so close to no. two people in my life. Yeah. You know about my uncle? Who is that? Be an extra. Oh, no, no. He's jabbering all the time. Sat no, no. down, talking to you, trying to run my lines. Right. Jabba, jabba, jabba. Yeah, I'm constantly like, trying to interrupt. And I'm busy with. Hey, what's hey, going on? Billy Hi. Boy. Hey, how are you? Hey. hey. All right. <laughs> Billy Boy. So we need to get back up in a minute or two, I think. Oh, are we going back yeah, up? Yeah, I think so. I can't wait to do this scene with you. Yeah. Well, they're funny. You're just so giving. No, I think that's us. All right. <laughs> Uh, there's one coming in to land and then there's three small ones, but you'll be fine. I'm the plane spotter out here at the airport and the studio's just behind us and I have to tell them basically when the planes are coming overhead because we have to stop the filming. Um, some of the actors are a little bit more testy than others. Some like it through rehearsal, some just when we're shooting. And um, basically it's a great job because I get to sit out in the sun all day long and um, read books in between. Occasionally I'll pop back for a little food, but apart from that, I just spot the planes. We could try and get a shot that comes in through the doorway. Where does the ring fall? Get left? It gets left on the floor by the fireplace. Oh, and then yeah, so we want to be able to look back through at Gandalf and Frodo sitting on the floor here. Where's the kitchen stove? There. So that's the table. So, so Gandalf, might be, Gandalf might be seated up. That's about as far Good. as we'd go. And so if we have Gandalf sitting up, sitting up there. here, and possibly Frodo in the foreground. So we're moving in and Gandalf is sitting right on the chairs there. In fact, if we had, uh, if we turned the chair around so that he was had his back to the fire, we might be get a slightly better, get a slightly better picture. Slightly better image. Uh, yeah, 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 because, uh, yeah, it's easier. Right, the cables here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. We've had to build this facade three times. One for this set, one for the large set, and one for the large set up in Hobbiton. So we've got to replicate it, this part of it, twice and then do the big set in Hobbiton as well. All the furniture's got to be built in two sizes. This is for mainly for Gandalf when he visits Bilbo and Fredo. the check is standing by in the other doorway, please, Joe. The same way we brought the cast in. We need to do checks and shoot. Okay. Set and action. the tongs out it'll be a thing where you won't you'll have to put your hand out here and the tongs will be over here you know it's a sort of like what's going on here and then oh wait you know what I mean it's kind of here yeah what are you doing and it's burning you just watch it for a moment burning burning and then give me your hand Frodo it's quite cool up, pop it in, and then just go back to your eye lines again, your cheated ones. Oh, can you see? Can you see everything? Something sort of that's quite 
You know what I mean? It sort of right. has a... Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. All right, well, why don't, why don't I quickly go bang off his pocket shot so we can yep. free up Richard and the other camera. You guys <laughs> set up this for handheld. Yep. Okay, good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's a good feeling. Now, should we should we just try it with Kieran and Sean running the same lines off, off camera here? So you, Sean and Kieran, swap swap places. Now you've got a back pad on, Kieran. Yeah. It all. Semi's Ganji. Have you been eavesdropping? I haven't been dropping no eaves, sir. I was just cutting the grass under the window. If you follow me. A little late for trimming. I heard Ray's voices. Speak. You're actually telling the truth, which makes you even more scared. We never speak of it again. No one knows it's here. Either. Colonel. Uday can't know. There's one other who will hear the group behind the ring. Got him. I look for the creature of the uh the uh end of the sound interest. Um, apart from the lines, that was the time. The timing was great. That, that was the lines. Yeah, apart from well, apart from the performance. What? The timing. The timing was really good. Oh, my staff's still in the room. So you can listen, listen to yourself, and, and when you hear turn, you can just you can just sense that that spot. So when you do it without the playback, you'll be able to feel. The, the position of the camera for when you should be turning around, you know. We put it away. We keep it hidden. We never speak of it again. No one knows it's here. Do they? Turn. Do they, Gandalf? Yeah, that's it. That is so utterly confusing. Okay, it's just, it's just, it's, 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 it looks good. Look good. Did it look all right? Yeah, you, you can... You can oh, well, well, Flash. Here we go. And action. All right. We put it away. We keep it hidden. We never speak of it again. No one knows it's here, do they? Turn. Do they, Gandalf? And you're basically just and I yeah, be on that. No, right. but you can you can put your you can put your elbow down there. The, the, the more the more down there you are, the better it looks. It looks actually. You know, yeah, well, I didn't try. No. And action. It is the master ring. In gone e up right. We have videos made by an expert in Elvish. And uh, this man has studied the language. He knows how it sounds. He's put it all down on tape for us. And so we've used him and Tolkien's words, Tolkien's book. How is it? Very well. Well, very, very odd. I mean, more than usual. Last week he wrote his will and started roaring with laughter. He's it's much better for the actor to find um, the accent uh, in finally before looking at the script from spontaneous thought and speech if the actor can uh, can use uh, the accent in his or her spontaneous speech it means that it doesn't matter what's in the script wouldn't you think they can handle anything they can then do anything that's thrown at them Hi, as I go over my lines, in embarrassment. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's let's uh, just check your speed for now, Big Brian. in the scabbard. Um, all the swords have a very slightly rounded off point, supposedly for safety, but if you try it hard enough they will still go through somebody. It's, it's just to reduce the risk to the actors a little bit. Um, actors don't like bleeding unless it's on cue. 
I've been a professional sword maker for about 12 years now, and six of those have been full time. Since I've started here, I've been working on things that are sort of the swords I've dreamed about working on, and I've also had nightmares about some of them. Since I started here, I've probably made 40 or so hero swords, 60 plus aluminium swords for the stunt work. And I've also worked on all sorts of other things like 100 or so weapons made out of EVA foam for background work. I had a friend who was really into sword fighting and he tried it out, but um, his one was pretty heavy. I remember finding it quite difficult, so it'll be interesting. Action! Awesome. I haven't slept in mm, just maybe two days or two hours over the last 48. Lots of dancing, about nine hours, and... That's uh, my favourite works. But yeah, no, fully into it. Action! Two, three, and four. Okay, once again. Oh. Okay. Putting the power in. One, two, three, and four. Okay, one more time. And then the voice up a bit, don't. Yes, sir. On guard. Okay, just wait for the cue. And action. <laughs> Okay, you didn't see another one? Action! Okay, yeah, place this one. I've only got one thing to say. Yes, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Summed up my whole You can't be. I think the majority of people watching uh, a sword film love the action and the sword play. But I have a saying about swords that um, through life you have a constant struggle between good and evil. And in the old days they used to settle that with the sword. That means you're standing with a sharp sword eyeball to eyeball with the goody or the baddie, whichever you want to be. And you need to have a lot of courage to uh, carry out that act. Uh, with a sword, death has some dignity to it. Wow. It really do work. <laughs> uh, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Where can I get some? Hey, dude. Look at that. Bitchin. Uh, I was just so excited because um, I've been hanging out for about two years. When I first heard the movie was going to production, um, I actually wrote a letter, I've been about 16 or 17, asking to be part of it. And now finally, woo, I'm here. It was a good time. Pretty much the usual walking backwards and forwards, three days. You can't get in unless you've got these, these lovely pointed ears. You know, they're a requirement. Mm. You just, I mean, if you haven't got them, you don't get in. Also handy for the Star Trek movies. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Trying to find um, extras, we really, it's, it's important to get people that are really into it and, and that aren't, oh, I don't know, that aren't annoying. Back <laughs> and put them behind there so they can come through. When you have such specific physical types like elves and, and, and things like that, everybody can't be an elf, so therefore my pool runs out. We've got 300,000 people in Wellington, and I'm trying to find a pool of very tall, very beautiful, aged between 16 and 30, supermodel, available 24 hours for two years. Yeah, All you right. go figure. <laughs> We're really kind of stretched at the moment, so uh, this is quite a big job for me to try and make sure that the good ones get in the front. Now, 
and is falling into the shadow world. It will soon become a wraith like them. Don't be so sorry next time. Today we've got um, the horse Florian, who plays the part of Asphaloth, Arwen's horse. Um, it's his first day on set. We can train him for all sorts of things like noise and fans and smoke and lights and mirrors and cameras. We can't reproduce 100 people on set. So it's all a little bit, let's see what happens, and I think he'll be pretty right, though. Spring on one. Springs on shot. Springs on two. Spring very slow. So the little lift comes up and grabs them yeah. back, pulls, yeah. pulls them back into the. Yeah. Retrieving them back which up. Be, which would be nice. Just really. Well, should we do the hit as well if we're going to do that? I don't know. Are you happy with the you want a, a one like that? Um, I'm glad it's raining. Guys, we have the worst luck in the world. Do we, this rain's going to trash the costumes just so we give it a chance to ease. Uh, and save their houses and sandbag their belongings, we make a film. Hey, winner our scale, that was ready, go. Richie's made snow just to keep you happy. Oh. <laughs> just absolutely brilliant, thank you. Well, you'll, you'll be here and they'll be, they'll be there. You'll be down with the head. You're disappearing. We can have you going behind the bush and then... Just a moment, because you may have to come back here. And the other thing is, everyone's starting to get a little bit cold. I'm just saying, everyone's very cold. I've got people shivering outside. Yeah, everyone's got to get out of here. Well, can we pull out now, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, ye
it's very hard to see anything when the sun comes up. Yeah. It's very contrasty. I'm trying to design a film set for the for the elves in the same way that the elves would have designed their own uh, their own habitation, which is uh, very much part of nature in the in the forest and building around the trees rather than build bulldozing them. <laughs> So we're trying to be as uh, sensitive as we can. You know, the, the logistics of actually you know, getting large pieces of set which are built in, in Wellington, you know, transported out here. And, uh, so uh, I kind of have to keep keep h half an eye on what. Um, on the, on the practicalities, but I, I don't let that kind of hold me back. This is just a great opportunity to work on uh, one of the best books ever written in one of the most beautiful places on Earth, um, with uh, some of the nicest people that I know. draft from the uh, helicopter just pushing the seat around so it's better to get rid of him and we just get some guys out there and we'll lift it into position ourselves. It's very easy to, to sit up 500 feet in the air and say wow that looks like a great location let's film there. Um, when you have up to three units per day, every day, for 18 months, taking that number of vehicles, those numbers of people, you really start to get an idea of, of the size of the logistics of this show. Well, we have to think about the basics. Where are they going to go to the toilet? How are we going to serve them tea um, and, 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 and coffee? If the weather closes in, we've got to put tents up for them. What are we going to do with the trash at the end of the day? Um, so hopefully the director will only ever have to worry about flying in there on the day, directing the scene and flying out again. I'll be taking a length of toilet paper in my pocket just for emergencies. turret things were on the outside but maybe there's different oh well, it's obviously the right side. Honestly I thought I'd just throw a blue behind it when we get the line up and shoot an element and then that would become the basis for the painting that we pin into it. Right. I know it doesn't look like the road's quite centered does it? It looks like the whole thing should slide over. As Gandalf comes here, the camera will start dollying and it'll eventually dolly and pan off the wall and through, yes. through to the thing there. But yeah. Okay, good. Well, it'll be good. It'll be great. It'll, be, it'll actually make it a, a, a really good shot. I think so. A really nice shot, yeah. Okay, good. I think we're late getting away. I think we're a little late getting away. We need to just whiz another one. just to try and get, get in a bit tighter. But um, we might need you, at the moment, that just the way that your staff falls, it goes across your face a little bit. So you oh. might need to either just hold it back slightly or to take it out slightly. We've been shooting for about four months now and we finally get to start to do things with the villains. Like, we've done a lot of um, 
shooting with the hobbits and Aragorn and our heroes, and it's great to finally get the dark part of the story um, on film to start to set up the sort of the opposition, as it were. So it's good. It'll be fun to do this stuff. All righty, we are ready, folks. We're shooting this light. This is a shot that uh, reveals uh, a flock of crows that have been sent out by Saruman to spy on the Fellowship, flying down through a hole in the ground down into the caverns below Isengard. So in order to do this shot, we're using four different sets of different scales because the crows fly deep down into the earth, and these are caverns one layer below the next. So this is the first cavern. Above that, we've got a model of the, of the ground plane, which is a much smaller scale, come down into a much bigger set, set which is this one, fly down, swoop around through there, come out through a hole at the end of that set into another set, <clears throat> fly out of that and into another set, and in that set we have a live action shot of Saruman shot on blue screen. In order to do this, of course, each set has to have a mat at the end of it so that we can insert the fourth, the, the set that's coming up, in through the hole. So we essentially stack these things up from back to front, so essentially they're all stacked, set, mat, set, mat, set, mat, all the way back up to the surface. Adding the details takes quite a lot of time. Uh, we find that um, we need to add a lot more detail than what you might think just to, to get to the level of reality where um, even a lot of the detail becomes subconscious, but to the eye, it's, that's when it becomes realistic. This is a smoke reader that we use to determine exactly the density of smoke and also to make sure that the density is kept constant during these, each of these passes because the passes take about 30, about 29 minutes to shoot, so we have to keep the smoke absolutely constant during that whole time. Now, the reason for the smoke <clears throat> is that, of course, this set is representing something that's extremely large, and in order to get the feeling that, that things that are actually only maybe a meter away are actually four, 15 meters away, we have to build some kind of atmospheric perspective into it, and that's done by shooting the very light hazing of smoke over the whole set. So we shoot it in the clean air, and we also shoot it in the, in the smoky air, and then when we put it together, we can combine those, so when we're far away from something it's quite hazy and as we get closer we can dissolve from the smoky pass to the to the clear pass you have the feeling that you're traveling much further than, than you actually are it's, it's a it's a basic trick of, of miniature photography to try to create the, the feeling that something's a lot bigger than it really is attack attack, attack. me Whoop. what no attack me attack. i'm going to do that oh yeah attack. Yeah. first year second year third year. Not too much if they get too much trouble, you just pick them up and they can't do anything. No, you attack me. Attack, attack, you attack. Well, I can't see them actually having the sword and going clang, clang. They might have to occasionally, but, it, but as you say... Or maybe you know, like uh, on run way, up on a piece of wall so it's the same height. Yeah, well, that's right. Well, you could do that. Well, you could get him yeah. doing that. The two to the left, you two, you have to cower against this, and then Sam says, get back, you, get back. you villains. I, I forget the term, but anyway, get back, you so-and-so. OK? Yes, sir. Get back, you Well, bad backward fall. You'd look where you were going, and then you went back like this. Uh, OK. Hey, come on. We put your... Give him another mat. Oh, Excellent! Excellent! Okay, that's good. Half him up. <laughs> great. Not so great. We've got to do another. It was almost great, but not quite. Gentlemen, to make it work better, crowd him, right? Fuck it, wrong place. Five, two. Yep. That's why it's high. Yep. <laughs> Back. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in spring. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Okay, try it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. This works out well where you can sort of probably not, not, not use the mask very much too as well. Yeah. Yeah. Which would be quite good, won't it? If you don't use the mask, then what about your eyes? 
you reckon it'll be contested? No, no, they'll, they'll be fine. I mean, let, we'll, we'll just have a look at the uh, the footage, but I think we're not gonna gonna notice. I think we'll be we'll be sufficiently far away. Yeah. I think I think you'll be okay. I think this is, this will be better than a mask, yeah. won't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Martin, you look just like him. Lucky, lucky man. Like, wow. So can we just strip everybody? Excuse, off on the strip everybody down to their um, jackets and uh, so keep the trousers on. Stand in the line. And act like you're gonna wait for the bus. And then when I say mingle, you mingle. But don't cross the line. Because then you, you lose points. Door camera. Wait. Sit. Your call, sir. Okay. And if you could. Uh, if you just just do a little bit of you know rocking around. I'll show you. Let me let, let me demonstrate. Okay. So we all we all start here, right? And just just go. Across to here, and then up, and, and be looking, looking around left and right. <laughs> it's very bizarre, isn't it? It's a good one for the old DVD. My name's Katrina Talbot <clears throat> and I'm the back half <laughs> of Bill the Pony. We have to actually have a bit of practice on every terrain because it's different in the snow and in the mud and in the, on the mountainside and in the swamp. We started um, with an agency in Wellington, Wellington Actors. Okay, can we have a bit of room, please? She said if um, we wanted to get involved in stilt walking, then we got called in to do Build a Pony. What, what we're going to do, you can see where these, foot, these footprints go up the hill here. When, to, when we're all ready, we're just going to have you. To, we're going to have you walking up the footprints, following in single file. And when when Michael, who's playing Gandalf, gets to the end of the footprints, he stops, and everybody will position everybody behind there, and that's our starting position. Huron is then going to, who's playing Frodo, is going to be doing a little fall and a roll down the hill. Vigo is going to jump out and grab him, and then if we can just run the scene. Now this is just a wide shot, and we're only going to need the, the basic big movement. So don't worry about dialogue. As he falls, and then you take it. <laughs> and you're going to fall to your right and roll. And fall, Karen. We've got the scene where we're walking through the snow. Using this product, we can make um, make something that people can walk through. And if you leave it overnight, it'll get very stiff. And then we can use it for other bits of snow. And they use it to insulate houses. It's amazing stuff. It's the best snow we've had. I'll be full of snow on the day, making an avalanche down here, full of our foam snow. The actors will be going along the top of the set and creating an avalanche uh, for them to uh, be buried in. So you see them looking up going, what the hell? 
and the veil of snow comes down, yeah. you're not quite sure what's happened. You see Gandalf be pulled off the rock. The uh, simulated snow is a rice-based product. This is just light and environmentally friendly and doesn't seem to hurt your eyes. The rest of all the dressings are different products, the waxes and different foams and paper and um, Dacron. But apparently there's MSG, MSG and rice, which can't be true. Basically it's like takeout. Hi, I'm Jamie Selkirk, host producer and supervising editor on the show. I'll just pop you in here and show Pete's trailer by his way on location. Come on in. Look at this. Wide screen, 34 inch flat screen TV, audio cassettes, amp, SPHS player, DVD player, and SPB to play. Pete, well, Pete can come in here when he's got a little bit of downtime while they're setting up a difficult shot in the studio in all location. He can come down here, he can play his rushes, select takes, or he can look at any other sort of his favourite movies. We'll sit down here and take a wee nap on his couch, and we'll run one. When's the couch coming, John? Well, we're talking about it. Well... It should be soon. No, no one should expect me to come in here and cut without a, without a couch. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Jamie, I'll... Just tell Jamie, just tell Jamie if he wants me to, to turn up to, to, look, to, look, to look at anything, there should be a couch here. Yeah. Hey, Monday's job. Monday's on job. It's Kieran's birthday, what was it, on Tuesday? Tuesday, On yes. Tuesday, it was Kieran's birthday. Yeah, so he's a very old man, so we have to treat him very gingerly. It's not, it's not his size. Some people think his height makes him delicate. It's not, it's his age. He's an old man. Look, look at the, the chiseled, the etched, the years of experience found on Kieran's face. And later you'll be able to see him wearing all of our faces. Is that true? Have you tried me on? Yes. Does it feel extra good? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Do you feel the dramatic overbite with my upper lip there? I did. You did? Don't drool in that mask. No, I won't. Any particular shot, we're going to have a floating moon yes. on, a, on a scissor, and like, like a moon. Oh, you, you mean a, a light? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if he wants light coming into the forest. He's screwed. Yeah. No, no, no. They can they can shoot down over here. They can light above the glass. Yeah. I think we're going to be working in here predominantly with steady steady cam myself. Yeah. Obviously sticks at times, but I yeah. don't. A lot, of, a lot of, I, th I think a lot of the feel of this really suits to the camp. Yeah. And just in terms of, because it can be that slight kind of glidey kind of, I yeah. don't think it doesn't need the, the precision of, of grain, yeah. grain and dog, I, I don't think it here. It yeah. feel a little bit more loose, I think. It's Frodo at the back, is it Sam in the front? Yeah. And on action, they'll just slowly come down. Let's put Brent there and the other two tallest in these two columns. Yeah. Who's under that? Mark. Mark, morning, Mark. Okay, so the concept here, guys, there's going to be a lot of wind and a lot of noise, and you, we're not going to be able to talk to you. So when you hear action, which is a toot on the air horn, and then one step at a time, very slowly, like you're in a funeral procession, you just start to move down towards the hobbits, okay? Hello, Jan. Hi, Peter.
So can you um, just prepare me a memo to the art department, please? Can you um, can the memo just say that Peter wants to see designs and sketches of all hand props um, before they appear on set? and that uh, Boromir's bag that was presented to me today is rejected as a piece of design. Boromir's bag? Boromir's bag is rejected as a piece of design. I, I don't like it. Okay. And that Boromir will need a bag um, within the next two or three days, I guess, so that they better come up with some ideas. Do I have my bag at this stage? Yeah, I just need to... Because I don't know if I have it at the Moria Mines. Houston, we are gold. When you give roll camera, well, there'll be 10 seconds rolling, and then Richie will give the cue action. Um, Pete will take his cue and start the air ratchet out the side, which will first pull those, the, the door frame and lintel out. Richie will take his cue from uh, the action of the rocks. After, when Richie starts on his novel, there'll be 10 separate explosions quite quickly. They'll, they'll both be as loud as a 22 gunshot, but it will reverberate in here. Let, let's do one more of those, just for luck. It, 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 was, it was great. Lots of good fake reverbs, but nothing, nothing can beat this. Real thing. Just wanted to get out of the office. <laughs> well, I want to hear it from wherever, where it, just what it's like. If you want to just, um, we've got um, a sequence of cave troll voices that Peter has listened to and likes. We're going to try to play those through the speaker here and get the natural ambience of the tunnel. Mostly that'll be used for off-camera shots in balance too. Hey, David, you want to power that thing on? Oh, it's on? Is it pretty loud? No, it's just pretty scary. <laughs> Can you get any more out of it? Once the workshop have finished the physical sculpt, we bring it over into the digital world, and the way we form that bridge between the, the, the physical model in the workshop and the digital model here in where the digital is with the uh, 3D handheld laser scanner. It's what we use to get the model into the computer. In the old days, we used to animate, you know, just one frame, you know, frame A to frame Z, and that was it. You wind up spending as much time probably animating a scene as you would doing it in stop motion uh, or maybe even more time. You spend that time refining the work and making it as good as you can make it rather than uh, just, you know, s slowly, carefully, 
you know, walking the tightrope of uh, stop motion where you go from frame A to frame C. But Gimli backs into there, mm -hmm. the cave troll thinks, right, I've got him. Mm -hmm. You know, that, like, there's nowhere to go in there. Mm -hmm. He can't yeah. yeah. dive. The cave troll comes for him with his hand, and just as the hand's coming towards Gimli, then... <laughs> Except for the uh, two hobbits jumping on the troll's back, really most of the scene up till that point had been played on the floor and not on the mezzanine or on the second level, right? And, but, you know, getting, getting into the set before the set was even built, when it was just built in the computer, I found that, well, you know, if we get a lot of battling going on on the second level as well as the first, you'll be at you know you'll be at, at troll eye level, which is kind of neat because everything else, everything in the storyboards is sort of you know looking up at him the whole time. Now, what what I think would be good mm -hmm. to, to try and depending on how long this lasts, is that, is that the full length of it? Is it? Yeah, it could probably be about half that length. Yeah, It'd probably just be a. Woof. Yeah, seems like yeah. Aragorn would come from there yeah, and just it, like get him and get yeah, him in the flank. Sure. Uh, yeah. Once you have that basic choreography in the miniature digital set, what you could do was then put on virtual glasses and see that choreography from the point of view of a camera you were holding in these glasses. So you grab the camera and you run around and suddenly you're in the set with this big troll and you start covering it like a news cameraman, basically. Uh, and he wanted it to have a sort of slapdash, non-compositionally uh, oriented feel, I think. Feel like it's like everything's being grabbed. What's challenging about Peter is his, his dumb ideas, you know, because he said, he said, let's have Legolas, you know, run up the chain on, and jump over the troll. And I thought, that's really dumb. But, you know, and I wouldn't have come up with that. So let's see if there's a way to, you know, to, to stay with that and not talk him out of it. Because sometimes you'll, you'll, you'll hear something that's, that's out there. But, and, and just say, oh, that, that won't work, that won't work. But I've seen enough of Peter's work to know that A, he's out there, and B, he usually makes the out there stuff work. We get on the set, and Jeff Murphy's directing it. They're setting up to do Orlando running across this thing. And just as they're getting set up to do the first take, I said, Jeff, listen, why, why don't we have, can we just have him grab, uh, grab a moment in the center and pull an arrow and try to fire it into the guy's head? Because that makes him more aggressive than just, than just, you know, acrobatic. And he can try to fire it into the troll's head, and the troll will knock him off before he can fire it, right? And so we'll use, and we'll see if we can talk Peter into that. So we did, and then Peter thought about that for a while. He said, no, 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 what we're, what we're missing is, is him actually firing it, it bouncing off his head, and then him jumping off to get another, another shot at him, right? So that's sort of how that, you know, that's sort of how the collaboration has worked. Well, he'll, you know, I'll have an idea, then he'll have an idea that tops that, and I'll have another idea that tops that, and he'll have another idea that tops that. So they just keep, it keeps building, you know? Okay. Here we go. Try it under one place. <laughs> <laughs> The thing that we were told by Randy and Adam was to make him not evil. You know, they, they wanted him to be more like an animal that, like a pit bull, where this is what he did well, was destroy things. And so at the end, um, they kind of wanted you to feel a little bit bad for him, that the Fellowship kind of had to kill him, but he wasn't like a, you know, like a raptor or somebody who was just pure evil trying to kill you. So at the end, there's Adam Valdez did the shot where he, you know, gets an arrow in the mouth and you kind of feel like, oh, that poor guy, you know. So that was the kind of direction we got from them. They've got to defend themselves, and the only way they can stop him is by, is by finishing him off. But that doesn't mean it's a great cause for celebration when they do finish him off. And I frankly don't mind if the audience feels a little bit dirty when it's over. 
being given the Balrog uh, as the first creature I had to texture was uh, quite intimidating considering uh, it's, it's the main nasty creature in uh, film one. We had the big maquette hanging on the wall that was beautifully sculptured. We took that and photographed it and I used that as the basis of the design for the, the way the wrinkles would flow over the body. Uh, then I took photographs of elephant skin and used that um, to get the really fine detail um, into the surface texture. Uh, I think we have a total of around 14,000 total, total textures on the Balrog. And, uh, it's, it can be a lot of work to actually just merge the different layers together, especially with a creature like this that is self-illuminating. He lights himself from inside, essentially like he's on fire the entire time. So we needed to see the global amount of how much he could light up. And this is definitely taken to the extreme, and we have a couple of areas where he just gets white hot that we uh, have toned down quite a bit. Uh, and then this is, of course, just half the creature, and then it gets duplicated to the other side and it makes it faster for the texture painter to be able to paint that way and see what the creature is going to look like before having to do twice the amount of work. Well, this is this is just the uh, the various views. This this is the view that um, we'll finally seen up on screen, um, and this is exactly the same moment seen from various different perspectives. Um, you can twist your way around it to see. Uh, how things are looking from various angles. A little representation of where, where Gandalf is in the, in the final thing there. Uh, the difficult thing that I've been finding with this shot is getting the, uh, the transition between the Balrog coming forward in a threatening manner and, uh, and re the realisation that the supports have gone out from under his feet. There's a kind of a moment in between those, those two ideas that's uh, been a bit of a tricky transition to get. When a set dies, it goes to set heaven. We have this person called the Strike Master. Grant Fahey comes along with his little elves and destroy it. It's a, it's a fast process and they start from the top and they go to the bottom and sweep it out. It's all over. Tragedy. This links us to the satellite. We send UHF over about three kilometers, and then we send a satellite, God knows how long that goes, it goes to Wellington, then it goes uh, into space, and then it comes down again and goes to Tianao at the moment, because that's where the other guys are. <laughs> and this, come with me, I'll show you. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> I just remembered we've got Peter with us today, so we don't have to send it anywhere. <laughs> that would be stupid. Kate Blanchett is travelling this way to walk across the river. Hi. Now, you've got to go back the way that we come in in the morning, and you'll see the first set of cones, and there's a couple of lights that come straight through the first path. Bring Kate in, but we have to drive her in. So Missy is establishing <laughs> the cleanest way to get Kate to set. I think Galadriel's all a bit poncy and a bit overexcited with her status. We don't all need boats. You could have got the bus, used public transport or the subway. The thing about Peter Jackson is he'll never ask you to do something unless he's done it first. So he's going to go in the water now. Mr. Frodo! Let's sit him down and have a look at his foot. Where are you? Let's sit him down and have a look at his foot. You want to sit on the bench or you want to sit on the chair? Uh, we got okay. Yes, we can up. No, that's fine. All oh, right, kill the pig. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. Good one. Have a seat. Just 
just threw it a stick pointing straight up in the water and I just landed right on it. Careful, careful. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah, now it's bleeding too, so. Yeah, it's going to be bad. Um, I mean, I don't know how. Bottom of the foot and just peel it back so that we can get, get out of the way. Good. You should probably elevate the leg more. Point? Is that too high? Foot hurts. I actually had a premonition right before we start shooting that yeah. I was going to get hurt, but I thought I was going to get hurt jumping over the log. Jumping over the log? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, I just. Careful, gentle. Right. There we go. Oh my god! Yeah. It's a lot of blood, man. It's a lot of blood. I'm probably going to need about three or four stitches there. It's going to be sore, but, you know, it should be alright. It's an hour and a car to Tiano, and it's 20 minutes here to, to get a chopper here, and probably only 10 minutes to Tiano. Yeah, we'll go for that then. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I gotta be able to see the camera. I gotta see the camera. Don't block the close up during the trauma. It goes in fairly screw going. Deeper and deeper into the shot on it. Now we should do a bit of a rehearsal with Sean just practicing. With his error. Getting used to the error. Mm. Getting used to being a man with it, with an error. Thinking out of other things. Oh, stay clear, everybody. Stay clear. Everybody, keep clear. Whatever you do, keep clear. And action! No! Yeah. 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 Ye
your killing machines move forward with the intention that you're going to kill. So keep it fluid, not stilted. Give it the best you can. Thank you. hard PG-13, so it shouldn't be surprising if the first cut that we present gets an R rating and we have to go back and trim some shots. That would be the desire, so that we sort of, we get a P PG, but only just, um, only just sneak in, as it were, by having to trim some shots. And then, of course, whatever we trim can go in the DVD edition. Tight eyelids. Yeah, they. Oh, it's going in now. How's that feel? Just keep on looking down. Oops. That's good. Lift the bottom down. Good one, Bart. Can you That's open right. your eye, or is it too, too much? No, it's fine. It's yeah. fine, he says. Oh. Hey, let's have a look. <laughs> freak The others will arrive behind you, Thomas will arrive, and then go. So it's, you're only probably on there for two or three seconds. And we'll make sure once they come, they'll come straight behind you, <coughs> and just we'll make sure everybody stops in a, safely. Everyone, people should just move in and grab, grab a goblin. Yeah. Grab a goblin. Grab a goblin. Got it then. The only difference between our background and our hero costumes for our goblins are pretty much as the hero lightweight chainmail, which was conceptually thought and designed and produced for this particular film. It's a chainmail that's one fifth the weight of steel, so the character is able to wear the costume for a long period of time without feeling any fatigue from any exhaustion or weight. Well, this is chainmail. Lots of it. This is a Moria Orc suit that I'm working on at the moment. There's 13,000 rings in one of these suits when it's finished. And it takes approximately three days to make up one of these suits. Some of the other suits are considerably more because the mail is a lot finer. Here I am putting together plastic rings and I love it. Absolutely mad as a meat axe, but I love it. And for me, it's been about five months of non-stop. Just the calluses on the ends of the fingers. However, we'll get there. Welcome to the bubble. Welcome to the bubble. This has been our home for what, last year? Two years. No, we only had the bubble for about a year. And the hostage. Oh, and the hostage, yes. We can't forget the hostage. He still hasn't coughed up his secrets. This is five million rings that we've put together. Which is ten kilometres worth of chain mail if every ring was stood on its edge. The only reason we know this is because the amount of materials that we've ordered through the supplier comes to ten kilometres worth. There's twice as much chain mail as ever was originally asked for. And you, you can imagine how we felt when all of a sudden all these stunties are wearing chainmail at Helm's Deep and giving it absolute death. Jesus and sort of standing there thinking, well, I hope it all holds together because it was never originally planned to do that. And so far it has. With the guy. I'm just going to watch the blood off this one. Let's do it once more. Let's just do it once more. <laughs> Turn around, yep, turn around, in the stomach. Yep, there. Gotcha. <laughs> 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 
Well, this afternoon we've got the pleasure of Christopher Lee's company. Quite a few of his, his scenes with some really bad uh, noise, background noise fans, you know, humming. So he's coming in to do um, his, his um, ADR, or looping, as they also call it, um, to, to uh, replace his dialogue Greatest lines. Power. Greatest power. No, I think it's power. You want more? I think power is the word. Three rings for the elven kings under the sky. In a sense, most famous. it's the most famous quote of the whole it is. Yeah. work. And not only that, the way that you Seven for the dwarf lords and yes, their horses of stone, nine for mortal men doomed to die, one for the dark lord yeah. on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie, one ring to rule them all, one ring to, one ring to bring them all and in the darkness, bind them in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. I mean, that's so famous. It is. In Moria, we translated a text that Philippa and Fran wrote that are based on the scenes of Moria, and the, the text was translated by David Sallow uh, into Dwarvish. And we used it, uh, I set the Dwarvish text for the all-male uh, chorus. orchestra set up very much as the way a pit orchestra would be set up in an opera and you could imagine the proscenium of an opera stage to be the equivalent of the screen in the cinema and the chorus is used in a way that it's coming right off of the screen it's actually playing right through the screen and the orchestra is below it the score is really spanning um, a lot of music from the beginning of the 20th century right to the end of the 20th century. Film music grew out of opera music and the emotional aspect of opera music and how it was used in theater just it seemed to appeal to me to, to conceptually like have had to work on the score. Uh, just to fill you in on a little um, bit of musical history, Billy once did have a trumpet tree which he planted in his garden. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was a, a lovely thing to see, but um, the council came and rooted it out. Premix mode, it's like we're building a house, you know, we're sort of going through all the different sounds and all the different ambiences. Yeah, I think you just have to punch it up a little bit. Hundreds of different tr different tracks and sort of deciding how that they, they should be juxtaposed to the film. For us, it's where we get to see the film sort of blossom into, uh, take a whole new dimension into what it ultimately is going to be as this wonderful experience. Peter was actually the sniffing of the wraiths. So Fran is the screaming and Peter is the sniffing. <laughs> We had, we had two recorders going on our first scream, and neither one of them could, could take it. Yeah. No, I, I know, I know. It's, it's amazing. She hit some frequency, yeah. which is really disturbing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And a level, too. Because <laughs> we were standing across the room, and she just like went... <gasps> and I felt my hair go... <laughs> and the paint was peeling. This is certainly not another movie. There's a lot of us are... are uh, sort of really made a lot of sacrifices to be able to be on this picture because we all believe in it so much. Welcome to Rivendell, Frodo Baggins. Have it all finished in a week and it'll be a release. It'll be with one down, two to go. But uh, I will have a little break, so I'm sure I'll uh, feel much better after the break and launch into the cutting of film too.